Hi, lovelies. Oh. How's everybody today? Hope everybody's doing well. It is Sunday, right? It is Sunday and extremely sunny out here. You hear me? And it's beautiful. Oh my God. I'm like, I'm just freaking loving this weather. I'm freaking loving this weather. Um, so everybody that's here, welcome. It's Carla Nicole. Um, I'm a single mother of two children. I have um, a daughter that is um, 19 and a son that's 10. And um, one of the beautiful things about um, doing this new series, which is the Transformation Series, is being able to uh, allow you guys to understand that there is so much to parenting that we really... <laughs> did not get a book on am i right or wrong i mean boy did we struggle with parenting um so um with the transformation series i am um, making sure to impart different ways to which we can transform our life and transform our various roles depending upon you know what we got going on so the reality is that as a parent and as a mom um, I've had to make various different transformations through my style of parenting through the years. So I just want to put it out there. First of all, um, I have a daughter that's 19 and I also have a son that's 10. So I have two children, two different genders, and two different ages, quite different. Um, my kids are nine years apart. So as you know, when you have children nine years apart, there is a huge difference <laughs> in how we parent, right? Um, some things that I parented with my daughter um, when she was small and young um, and was concrete on my thinking with certain things um, on how I parented her, I kind of bent the rules a little bit with my son. So I want to talk about that because sometimes we do tend to, you know, and we are accused and actually criticized by our eldest children that we did did them a little bit different. Hey, Shawanda, blessings to you too, lovely. Um, so we did actually change a lot how we how we parented our eldest children versus how we parent our our youngest children. Um, and so I want to talk about that a little bit. I also want to tap on how we transform from how we parent our adult children versus how we parent our our small children and and the difference. In that some of the things that I learned and some of the lessons I learned through parenting um, was very different um, even on how I talk to them and, and talk and express to them the importance about their sex and their sexuality and their bodies all of these things I think that as I parented um, through the years um, I kind of changed some things if you will um, and then of course it's kind of different when you're talking you know your son how you train how you how you teach your children versus your male child versus your your female child so you know there's a fluctuation in that as well so we're going to get started everybody welcome if you have never been to my show before this happens every sunday usually at 12 o'clock p.m um only one time did i do a, a show that was in the evening but that was for um, which was last week. If you had not got a chance to see the Live with Carla Nicole show last week, it was a powerful show. I had Satori Seals on, and he and I, worked. we actually talked about transformation and the importance of your spiritual core and how to improve that in your life. So that was awesome in and of itself. But <clears throat> today we're going to talk about how we parent. And um, what sparked me to kind of want to talk about this is I had I had a gentleman that I that I coach, and he's a father, but he's not a single father, which is kind of ironic. But he's not a single father. He's actually married, and, and they have a daughter. And what he told me was that um, he does primarily the um, parenting through the day um, because his wife works during the day. He works at night, so he takes care of their daughter. They homeschool her. And what he told me was profound, and it made me kind of want to spark a conversation in this show today. Um, he talked about how, um, you know, his daughter's behavior really reflects um, kind of a spoiled, 
uh, bratty behavior. And what he told me, which I thought was profound, he said it was very frustrating for him that his daughter's behavior was very, very, I don't know, if you will, very, um, just, just not, not a presence that the average person would want to, um, that wants that will want to continue to be involved with their children. So what she told, what he told me was, he said that his daughter, um, her behavior was off the Richter Richter scale, just wasn't in a good state. So I want to talk to talk about this to you guys today about behavior. So with your children, your children's behavior is a huge clue as to how you're parenting. Now, what we do with parents, don't we always ask our kids to see their report card and how are you doing in class and what's up with your progress report and did you get your homework done? And we do all that as parents, right? We wanna check in, make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing for their school and making sure that they're behaving properly in class. However, we really don't evaluate or check in on ourselves. Like how is our progress with our children in ho at home? How's the behavior at home? Are our kids listening? Are our kids behaving? Are our kids doing what we ask them to do? Or do we have to keep repeating and repeating and repeating ourselves? So I wanted to talk about behavior because I think behavior is huge when it comes to parenting. When we parent our kids, and I think this is very important, a lot of times we don't even really um, pay attention to how we um, focus primarily on the... Um, Shawanda, I don't know why you can't hear me. Anybody else having a problem hearing me? Please make sure to let me know you can hear me, okay? If you can't, I'll see what's going on. So I don't know why you're not being able to hear me, Shawanda. Let me know. Everybody, let me know if you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Um, if not, you might have to wait to the till this goes um back into the feed. Sometimes, you know, it just depends. Sometimes we have odd things going on with our with our um Oh, our Wi-Fi or whatever. So it's going well for me on my end. But anybody, hopefully let me know you can hear me okay. So anyway, what I was saying is behaviorally, our children let us know how we are parenting. And why I say that is when you get home or when your child gets home from school or if you're homeschooling your child and your child stays with you all day and their behavior and your, your interaction with your child is toxic is constantly bickering and complaining. You're constantly fussing and fighting with your child. You're not getting along. They're not doing as you ask them to do. They're not doing well in school. Um, these are high, high marks that you are getting D's and F's in your parenting. <laughs> and the reason I tell you that is D's and F's is not a bad thing. It just is something that you need to work towards getting a newfound way to how you're parenting your child. Now, the reason I say this is important is because a lot of times we just parent and we don't really step outside of our parenting to see how is it working. And I think each child is different. So let me put that out here also. If you have multiple children, multiple personalities, it's a challenge because you have to now know what type of parenting style is as effective for each child that you have. Sometimes you can get lucky and they pretty much, your, your parenting style pretty much um, works no matter what personality type you're dealing with in your home. But sometimes that is just not the case. You may have a child, and we love our kids, right? But we may have a child that our personalities clash um, or our personalities don't get along with each other. And so um, in order to parent a child that we have a hard time with understanding um, or, or coming up with a way to resolve how we're parenting, it can be challenging a lot of times. And I want you guys to understand, listen, it's not that you love your child any more or less. It's just that when you are trying to parent a child that you have a hard time getting along with, it makes it all the harder. Um, and so I want to bring up about behavior because I think behavior is key. Now, there could be a child that you have that is a volatile personality. What that means is they're bickering, they're complaining, they don't want to do anything, they don't want to own their own responsibility on the things they're doing. They're criticizing you all the time about what you're not doing. There sometimes has to be someone to mediate for you. Sometimes you have to ask someone else, like, is there something I can do to fix this? Because a lot of times we'll parent and we're not even conscious that 
we are parenting to the best of our ability. But to the best of our ability doesn't excuse us from having to deal with our children and dealing with something that's toxic all the time. You should be in your home and it should be peaceful. You shouldn't have to yell, fuss, fight, and argue with your child every day. If that's the case, that's not healthy for you or the child. So there comes a point where we have to sit back and say, okay, is this parenting working? <laughs> is this working for me? Is this working for the child? And you can tell based upon how the child's behavior is. Now, here's the thing. With me having both sexes, because like I said, I have a daughter that's uh, 19 and my son is 10. With me having both sexes, I had to um, resolve the way I parented my son versus the way I parented my daughter. Um, and the reason I say that is because it was very um, different to have a relationship with a, a, a same-sex child. And her and I didn't really have a personality that clashed per se, but she was a little more hard-headed. So <laughs> with that said, is there, would, there had to be... Um, a way to which I knew that if I instructed sometimes a certain thing that she would respond a certain way. So what I, I learned to do is kind of masterminding, okay, if I say this, she's going to back away from it. If I say this, she's going to run towards it. So let me fi figure out a way to effectively get what I want out of her by not trying to um, bash up against that hard headedness. And it took some creating. I had to figure out ways to um, allow her to be herself, but also come up with a plan on how do I do this without um, losing my parental guidance. Because as a parent, we're supposed to be the guide to the child. We don't own our kids. So it's not an ownership, you know, or, or, and, and sometimes I think as parents, we, we have this uh, possessiveness when it comes to children. And and we can't. We we just have to get to the point where we're, we step back out of that and say, I'm not trying to own my child. Let me just let them go on and have make their mistakes, but at the same time, help help to guide them even when they make the mistake. So that's another challenge I think that we have a tendency to make a mistake with. Now I have a course called Learn to Unlearn, and in my course I talk about how we learn to unlearn some things that maybe are not working effectively in life. That applies to this, especially, especially. Because when we're trying to teach our children, sometimes we have to get out of the way of how we knew it worked for our last child or how it worked for our, for our friend's child or whatever. We'll take what they did or how they did it and say, oh, that might work for mine and find out mm -mm, it's not working. And the best way to pay attention to how it's not working is again the child's behavior and how you're flowing in your home when you are you know every day like in the everyday balance is it is it that you're not getting along is it that your child is doing a lot of secrecy um they're trying to hide from you they're not being upfront and honest because really let me tell you something when we have as parents when we have situations to where our children are trying to hide certain things or they really don't want to tell us what's, what's really going on in their life because they don't want to show that they've had some kind of you know I don't know personality glitch going on and they don't want to admit to, to anyone or themselves that they're making poor choices then then they just want to hide it from us they want to make us think oh we're perfect we're perfect and, and they're not so it's important that we do this I think this is important as a parent it is okay to take a pause and say, you know what, when I step back and I'm looking at my home life and I'm looking at how I'm parenting my child, and this can be any time. It doesn't matter. If you're a parent, you're a parent forever. So even if your child is out on their own, if they're grown or young and you know, you're still hands-on and nursing them, it doesn't matter what stage as a parent. Still step outside of it and say, am I still parenting and the parenting is still effective. Is it still working or is it not? Because I think sometimes it's hard for us to really sit back and say, oh, wait a minute. My child is doing this and my child is doing that, but 
I'm demanding them or commanding them to do this and they're not listening and they're doing it their way. And now I have an issue because now I'm burdened with the fact they're not doing it the way I told them to do it. And now I'm going to demand them to do it this way. And, you know, we can't even control our animals, let alone our kids or our mate or anything else. So we cannot get systematically just confined and um, firm on only wanting to see it our way. We have to look at self. As a parent it's very important and I don't care what stage we're at stop look at your parenting and see is it effective now parenting is also parenting now it was so crazy is parenting is actually get this parenting is a relationship so while we're relating and while we're really involved with our kids and really excited about taking care of our children we still have a relationship with our kids. So when we're, when we're really working on trying to figure out, okay, like with my daughter, I'll be like, look, young lady, uh, I need for you to do this, this, and this. We'll just talk about, as an example, we'll talk about the bills or whatever. I need you to do this, 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 and this. And say, for instance, she does everything but one thing that was a major thing. Well, rather than starting to argue with her and tell her, you know, you don't listen, da, 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 it's like, you know what? There are consequences to your actions, okay? So because there's consequences to your actions, you got to be more profound and pay attention to what is it you need to do. How, how are you going to improve? See, and for me, I mean, it, it's a challenge for me because I often have to step out of myself, step out of my parenting and sit back and say, okay, let me see. You know what? As a child, I was an only child. So, you know, that was a challenge. But with my children having such an age gap, because my daughter's like nine years older than my son, I had to figure out ways to um, learn how to parent my daughter a little bit different <laughs> because she was one way and my son's another. So, you know, of course, it's a different type of a, a, a way of, of parenting. Now, Shava asked a good question. She said, is it true parents manipulate more than nurture our children? Well, Shava, I'm so glad you asked that. Um, I think it depends on the parent. Not all parents are the same. But, um... I think that we can tend to manipulate. I'm not a perfect parent. We all have our own issues. So I don't sit up here and say I miss perfect or nothing like that. But I can tell you this. When you parent your child and you try to come up with um, ways to um, encourage them to be in right standing. This is the challenge is right standing or making good decisions. Not as many indecisions. Of course, we're going to make mistakes. That's just what it is. But how can we make more right right standing decisions rather than always making indecisions and the basic the basic way to do that is to sit back and say okay i can encourage you without manipulating and see the, the hard part about manipulation is it takes a lot of work <laughs> it takes a lot of work to manipulate somebody to do what we want them to do and nine times out of ten they're not going to do it anyway whether we want them to or not so we have to step back and be like huh okay Maybe, just maybe, I should step back out of this and say, hold on a minute. As a parent, let me encourage you. Now, also, the hard part about us, I think, as parents in this day, in this day and age, is we ha actually have a chance to encourage our children, but we also have a chance to maybe do more for them than, than we had done for us when we were young. Because, of course, so much opportunity now to really, I mean, it, uh have the pursuit of happiness happen for your kid without doing too much but when you have that you have to sit back and think okay so how can i encourage you to do as i ask you to do and the best way to do that is really by example you know i think when we lead by example and we encourage our kids it's okay to make mistakes you know we and and not always try to demand and command things but actually encourage them you know, one of the hardest things, I think, for mothers, this is just a mother thing, because I think guys, I think dads are better at this than mothers. I'm not saying all, but I think they're better at it than, mo than, than moms, is um, they know how to let go. Like, and what I mean by let go is we, we hold on to our, to our kids, like, okay, I don't want you to leave. I don't, I don't want you to, to, to transform into an adult. I don't want you to be a mom. I don't want you to do this. I don't want you to do that. But I noticed that fathers, on the other hand, 
seem to do better with the transition of their child transforming from infant to ad to to child to adolescent and i think it's kind of a challenge because it's like okay how do we get from being a child i mean a parent and we're like okay as a parent i'm going to make sure that you are doing what you're supposed to be doing but at the end of the day i want you to be the best you at it be the best you that is very important but it's I mean, I just see it as fathers do it better than mothers on this. I think we have a harder time letting go. Like, I don't know. I don't know if it's our nurturing side or our emotional side or what the hell. But a lot of times it's harder for moms to let them go. So one of the beautiful gifts, and I'll tell you this, one of the beautiful gifts that I received from someone um, before my daughter actually became an adult, a friend of mine just was like, listen, uh... I was strongly, and I think my daughter might have been about 15, maybe 14. She's like, I'm going to tell you right now, you need to start preparing yourself for when she gets out on her own. You know, because at that time, you know, I, I had, you know, my son was fairly young. But I didn't think at the time, I didn't think about her leaving, her moving on, her becoming an adult, her being on her own. I didn't, it didn't even, it wasn't even on the frontal lobe of the mind. I wasn't even thinking about it, actually. I was thinking more about what's going on in the current realm. Not really thinking or projecting that this child is going to eventually be grown. So what am I supposed to do, right? So um, when I had someone tell me, hey, you need to be not going to everything. You need to start preparing yourself to, for the detachment from your child. Because your child is, is centered around, I mean, she's your nucleus. She's who everything you revolve around. So you better get, you better get started with back in a way and saying hey okay let me let me start to transform okay and change what i'm doing and if you do that i'll tell you what you do that you'll find like oh okay so i'm able to change but it's not easy it's not easy for us to change as quickly as like i said as fathers do i i mean like i said i'm just using this as a generalization don't take me or quote me as this being bible but I'm just saying it's challenging for a mom to let it go. So, so like I said, I let it go and said, okay, you know what? I'm going to let it go and I'm going to let her grow on up. And I'm going to encourage her to grow up. As she does that, I'm going to progress my parenting style. Get this, how I parent my daughter. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to grow with her rather than treat her like a baby and a lot of times I hear teenagers, now this is just off the rip, because I, you know, when little girls and, and my daughter had all her little friends coming around, oh, mom, you know, uh, they call me mom, oh, mom, you know, my mom treats me like a baby, and this and that, and it's like, that's not, that's not, I said, well, you are her baby, you know what I'm saying? So I was confused as to why they were so, you know, always using that as a commentary, until I sat back and thought about it, and I thought, you know what, maybe we're not parenting, our parenting is not in a progressive state this is why i was telling you about my, my course earlier about learn to unlearn we as parents have to step out of ourselves and start to learn what we're doing as a parent and unlearn that so we can learn something new that will work because we can't talk to our 20 year old daughter like i talked to her when she was three that's not gonna work so i had to learn to progress and treat her as she is in the now in the present treat her and be present as a parent to her and now instead of being okay mom and yes mom and okay I'll do it as you say now I'm more negotiable or I'm more encouraging or I'm more of an advisor or a mentor rather than a demand somebody demanding and commanding her to do something so I had to change transform and step out of how am I parenting her versus how did I parent her when she was small and that like I said that was a challenge so I want to talk to LaTanya get a, a second she brought up something that I would like to share with everybody she said um want to get all her comment here okay she said that I have a child like you described earlier the mouth the attitude how I should or shouldn't do something about a situation and she's 26 I can't wait for her to get out of my home and get in her own to see how she manages on her own I can't stand the mouth okay Latanya 
Listen, love, I understand. Trust me. I'm sending you lots and lots of love. Trust me, I really am sending you lots of love. And it is not easy as a parent when the children go through their different phases of attitude or, or peer pressure. And sometimes, you know, that mouth and that, that snazziness and stuff is coming from a trend of what they call the mean girls trend. And the mean girls trend um, is really trendy right now. It's, it's, it's very common. And if it's if it gets out of hand, it could be like a bullying. So you want to be very mindful that you correct her in your space and in your time when she's around you. Listen, I'm your mother. So what you're not going to do is you're not going to speak to me in that tone, in that way. We have to realize that as a parent, we have dominance. Even though, you know, we're a parent and, and we don't want to probably put our hands on them after so long. Just like, I mean, but we have to be able to state, hey, you have to respect me. I am the parent. It's not easy to be a mother with an elder daughter that's already 26 on her own and grown, but she's still in your home. So at the end of the day, she needs to give you a certain level of respect. And sometimes we have to um, give consequences, even, even as they are older or whatever. Listen to me. I'm telling you what, you're going to keep talking to me like that and you're going to be finding yourself somewhere else to stay. Something like that. Like, and you've got to back it up 100%. Anything you say, um, uh, make sure that you have, um, I don't know, basically just have, uh, consequences and your discipline should not have to be, um, so crazy to where, oh my God, you know, um, I'm feeling like I'm in a tug of war with my child. But what you can do is you can start putting up the dominance and letting them know. And I think it's very important that we have consequences because a lot of times as mothers, I think we're guilty. And sometimes fathers, too, because there's there are fathers out here that's really lenient with their daughters. Their daughters can get away with murder. And you're like, how did you allow your daughter to just get away with murder? Well, you know, I, I care about my daughter and I don't want to hurt her and blah, 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 blah. It's like, no, you have to stay claim. You have to actually tell your child, look. I know you, you know, I know you're my child and everything, but don't get it confused. I mean, sometimes we have to like literally let them know I am not to be played with. And if that's what we have to do, that's what we have to do. And we can't, we can't sit back and be like, oh, well, they can do whatever they want. Because when we're too lenient, kids have a tendency to take advantage of that. And so I think it's very important as, as with parents. It, oh, she's 16. Okay. So 16. All right. So you have a little more dominance. Okay. No, Latanya, it's good. So she's 16. So um, just start um, saying what you mean and mean what you say. And what I mean by that is when you start noticing that your daughter is doing certain things that is unexcus inexcusable and she's just being um, disrespectful to you or anything like that, mm -mm. get her to understand. There's certain things you will and will not tolerate. And let her know. I understand you may be going through your hormonal changes, you know, you're going through puberty, you got your friends and stuff, but you're not going to talk to me like that and be very specific. And the thing about it, LaTanya, is we as mothers, some of us are softer spoken than others, but when you, <laughs> when you start to stake some claim and when you start to really press some issues with them, they start to get like, oh, they, they can't believe it. Like, oh my God, I can't believe that my mom actually did this. We have a problem, and not just you, not just moms, but men too. Some men are, are guilty of this, fathers. Um, we get to be too lenient, okay? And in our leniency, what happens is we allow certain things to pass. And so there's a blurriness between what's okay and what's not okay. So now, and it's never too late, Latanya, you can do this now. It is never too late. Hey, Carolyn, it's never too late to now start changing the way you discipline and there's just has there has to be very clear guidelines as to what you expect from her and what you are going to do if she doesn't comply and you have to do this but when you do it make sure you're very consistent and persistent on what you say also i have a um an online e-course called learn to unlearn have your daughter take the e-course I will give you the link and I'll inbox it to you. Have your daughter take the e-course because there's some things she needs to unlearn. She needs to change because actually 
learning certain things and learned behavior on how she is doing certain things in your home has come from behavior and habit habits i'm telling you and a lot of times i know for me with my daughter i didn't i didn't say no enough i believe i didn't say no enough and i thought you know i'm going to gift her she was doing well in school i didn't have a lot of problems with her behaviorally but i believe that sometimes i should have said no more often and i think we have a tendency to believe that if we gift our children every time they do well in school, then that's good enough. No, sometimes we have to tell them, you know, you have to do without sometimes. You can't have everything everybody else has. And a lot of times that bratty behavior or that cockiness or that, you know, well, I'm better than everybody else attitude or the, or the attitude period comes from an entitlement. An entitlement position or how they see themselves they th they feel like I'm entitled to get what I want because I am who I am and all this other stuff no sometimes we have to shoot down how they are behaving by actually changing the way we parent so when we parent differently and we start to learn to actually change how we see how we're parenting it changes the game we just really have to sit back and say is this working for me is this working for me the online e-course is called learn to unlearn and i'm telling you what it will help you to design a new way of understanding what parenting really is about it's not always about demands and commands sometimes we just have to learn how do we how do i evolve and change the way i, I or, or tweak the way i'm parenting my child and then like i told you i have two different type two different gender children so i have a son and a daughter and it, it's a challenge for me sometimes because I'm like, oh, I got a son, you know, <laughs> so I mean, how do I do this? You know, so um, sometimes we have to have and sometimes you have to have a male um, for for even for your daughters. If you don't have a, the father involved or if you have a, a, a father, sometimes you have to have an alliance, somebody else to help you to get um, a little more um, structured with your discipline. And men can actually help that if you have like a male, a brother or an uncle or a very good male best friend or somebody like that, that can help you tweak your own means of discipline. And then you have it in, in, a, in have an alliance with that male friend or that uncle or cousin or whatever. And that child knows that, okay, I have to have my standards here because I, I have somebody who will deal with me accordingly and if she's got a car or she's got a cell phone or she's got an ipad or she's got all apple apple um apple uh products or whatever it is she has that she's taking that she's taking for granted um you can begin to take those things from her and explain i will not gift you for bad behavior or for how you're treating me as a parent i will not gift you these things because i'm paying for the bill or because i purchased this item understand that is a privilege when you start to understand your child's currency and a lot of the currency could be the games every weekend it could be um going with their friends to the movies or different things different activities and they really want to go let them understand it's a privilege to go there and I'm not talking just about grades because grades is a, is a good thing to to make sure we you're you're doing well in. But you also have to have a good grade at home. And how I'm raising you is based upon how you are acting and behaving not only at school but at home as well. And so that actually helps you to be able to sit down and be rooted in your discipline. It's not it's not easy if you weren't a disciplinarian at first, but you can have someone help you get friends or get men that really truly can um encourage you to you know truly be um in alliance with you to make sure your child's behavior actually improves that's really really important shawanda no problem i it, it will play back so you'll be able to see it again i'm sorry it was freezing up on you honey i'm so sorry about that Carolyn, she said, I didn't say no enough to my two daughters, uh, her two oldest daughters. And now when she does, <laughs> she says that uh, they get upset. And of course, I can imagine. Um, but she has had to make them understand that they cannot have everything they want. 
Um, she also told them that there's a big difference between a want and a need. Powerful, Carolyn. I'm so glad you shared that. Um, Carolyn and I are uh, very good friends. She's a part of my she's a part of my live with Carla Nicole group. Love her to death. I love her spirit. I love her soul. Um, and and she is also someone we have had one on one conversations about both having adult children, and and she comes on here and we talk a lot about the transformation of changing from being a mother of a child that was small and then they progress to this adult person powerful thing about it though is what i love carolyn admitting to is just didn't say no enough and then as they get older they expect to still have those perks you know what i'm saying well mom are you gonna still pay my auto insurance aren't you older don't you have a job no i'm not paying for your auto insurance then you're a, a horrible mother you know well why can't you you don't have any kids anymore mom and why do i have to buy my own hair products mom can't you buy them for me and all this other stuff it's like uh no uh my obligation to you financially was when you were small and you didn't have capabilities of taking care of you however now you are an adult and you are responsible for your own needs now and i love what you said carolyn we have to make sure we are telling children what their needs are because a lot of times they have a blurriness on what that is your needs is what what you need to live <laughs> not what you need to have because everybody else has it so i i love what you said carolyn that's beautiful and it's very important that um you know it's very important that we get to the point where we really truly understand that hey no is no and that is not easy for a parent that maybe had a hard time saying no or sometimes we're just people pleasers and this isn't only moms this could be fathers as well that have a tendency to just really um you know lean more towards being lenient so that's that's also important um so tori said something which is is is, is uh important let's take a look at what he said he said father's parent from the future in mind versus what they are now Fathers are visionaries, and we naturally see it, naturally see it um, in our as as it being their own nurturing way. He says, "Fathers nurture." It is also fathers' nature as well. The benefit is, uh, fathers teach their children from a space of vision. That's from a father. He was on our show. He was on my show last week, so I'm glad that he he keyed in and and, and was able to share that. So basically, fathers father's parent from a visionary's point of point of view from a visionary perspective so it's a little bit different when we're parenting from a nurturing space and emotional space so that's why you know sometimes i said with with us mothers or with the lenient parent because it's not always mothers with the lenient parent we have a tendency to kind of parent um i don't know we we parent out of either guilt or we'll parent based upon how um we we feel at the time so it's important that we get away from that and start to really, you know, parenting based upon um, the peace you're going to have in your home. And that's something that comes from having complete and total control over your home, over your home, because you are the queen bee. So in your home, certain things will be allowed, certain things will not be allowed. So in that, in that nucleus and understanding, there's certain rules you comply with by being here. There's certain understandings you understand by being here. And it, it can be spoken or unspoken, but your child understands that that's, that's your home and there's a certain level of respect. Okay. So like I said, anybody that wants to join my e-course is called Learn to Unlearn. As parents, we're never too old to learn. We are never, I'm going to say it again, never too old to learn. We are never too old to learn. And sometimes we just need that extra understanding of stepping outside of what we think we know and, and getting open to something else. A lot of times we'll be so concrete in thinking that, you know, it's my way or no way, but your way isn't working. So why would you say no way? You have to say, okay, let me look and be able to be willing to transform, to change some things. Am I open to change? Am I open to listen? Am I open to listen? That is one of the hardest things to do is listen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So am I willing to listen? 
Am I willing to listen? If I'm willing to listen, then guess what? I'll be able to transform. And then my, my relationship with my child will transform and change to something better than what it is right now. So it's very important that we get to a point where we're like, you know what? I can advance my relationship with my child and I can repair my relationship with my child and I can reinvent my relationship with my child. I don't have to stay in this, um, I don't know, this crazy back and forth tug of war with my child. I don't have to do that. I can actually have a beautiful relationship with my child, even if, even if our personalities clash, because now I've learned to master how to cope and deal with certain things and understand. See, we often miss that it takes understanding our children. But when we have a conflicting personality, it's hard to understand that. Like, I don't understand how come you do this, 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 and this. But allow yourself time to just get to that space of understanding. Get to that space of saying, okay, let's work around some things. And let's come up with a plan so that you and I actually enjoy coming home. You don't want to have to get out of your car or get, I'm sorry, pull into your driveway and sit there and think, God, I don't even want to go in here because me and my kid is going to have it out about something. Um, we're going to be arguing. I just don't want to get out of my car. I don't want to deal with them. You want to be able to jump out of your car, hug your kid and say, I'm glad you're here. I love you. You know what I'm saying? And even in your disagreements, you can still love your child. Just, just take a pause sometimes and understand that parenting is a relationship. And in parenting, we have to have a certain level of discipline. If we're not disciplining our children, we're going to have chaotic behavior, period. So if we're not standing on and being rooted in discipline with children, they're going to do whatever the hey they want. And when they do whatever they want without any consequence, their behavior is going to worsen, period. I'm telling you now. If you want to become a member of my live with Carla Nicole group, please hit here and I will, I will add you to my group. Also, I have an e-course right now for sale for $25. I'm, I'm selling it low, but it's, it's a learn to unlearn course. Learn to unlearn e-course is very powerful and it can help you not just with parenting, but just life in general. And I will be putting the link in our, in this, um, in this live. So you have it. And also, I'm telling you guys, it is a powerful thing to be able to sit back and redirect your life. You don't have to just settle for what is going on in your home. You can start making a stance on what is okay and what's not okay. What is you, you expect and what, what is it you don't expect? And then how can you transform it? By making very, very intentional steps to transforming. It can happen. And it can happen for you. Okay? Thanks, Shawanda. I'm glad you stuck it out with me. I know the, the fuzziness was going in and out, but it will be getting to rebroadcast really quick. Hey, Robert, thanks for the love. Um, you know, it's just, it's just hard as parents. I just think sometimes we need encouragement. A lot of times we don't have someone to kind of, you know, pat us on the back and say, you know, you're a good parent. Just sometimes it's, it's the hardest, toughest job is, is being able to um, parent and love our kids unconditionally and yet kind of work with them through their their I don't know their errors their mistakes in life and, and still encourage them to be the best version of themselves so as you know it's not always easy so alrighty guys I went over a little bit today but you know parenting is one of my um, one of my great great loves I love parenting but I also love learning about parenting I think it's one of the greatest greatest blessings in life um, and if you didn't know, I do have a whole page dedicated to, to parenting. It's called Parenting Resolution Corner. Um, I've done various different um, just videos and writings on how to improve parenting. So go over there and like that too. Um, and uh, again, I'm so glad you guys took a little time and stayed with me. I appreciate it, everybody. So I'm out of here. It's Carla Nicole. I'm signing off. Best kept. Have a great day. Bye.